viewers and listeners, Meat Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, as always, my co host, Donnie Hoover. And we uh, are ramping up for the Arnold. By the time you hear this, it'll already be over. But uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on this week, and it's going to be busy, busy, busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're recording this on show week. And I mean, show weeks for just a normal show is, is always hectic, let alone a three day event with five wrestling shows and other stuff happening. We're recovering 24 hours of content. So, yeah, uh, it's already started today as, as we're recording this. I'm already getting messages and phone calls and texts and all kind of stuff. So we're, we're, we're ramping up for it. <laughs> Get me in, get me in. All right. <laughs> yeah, I even got fans reaching out asking if I can get them in for free and they'll help out. And I'm like, uh, nope, sorry, bud. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Joining us on this episode of the Wrestle Horror Podcast is Alex Matthews. Alex, how are you tonight? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good. We are doing, um, we're hectic, as yeah. you know. <laughs> no, I get it. A lot going on this week, and as a matter of fact, you are going to be at the Arnold this weekend with us. Yes, mm -hmm. and I am—I couldn't be more excited about the opportunity, and then to face some uh, somebody like James Avery, right? Somebody who's a veteran of the business for X amount of years. I mean, you guys, I'm sure, have the stats. It's—it's mm -hmm. it's definitely quite humbling, right, to face oh, somebody yeah. with that. Uh, uh, what would you call that? I mean, the bar, you know, the um, tenure, yeah. Right, the pedigree, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been in the business 20 years plus, so yeah, he's been around a while. All right, and has his own school, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much with now, so it's oh, definitely yeah. a big, big opportunity, big, uh, big match that uh, you know. I I feel like um, I wouldn't say people might take lightly, but it's just a big opportunity for Alex Matthews, right? You know, uh, going in there and proving himself that you know somebody with that kind of experience um alex matthews is just as good if not better you know uh maybe hopefully that night <laughs> there you go so alex uh let, let's go back to the beginning okay uh first of all I, I i want to assume and i really i use that term loosely because i know a lot of wrestlers were wrestling fans as children um i'm going to assume that you were one of those yeah yeah yes very much so. And uh, when did you really start? I mean, how old were you when you really started to get into wrestling? That's the crazy, you know, I always try to uh, think about that question um, because a lot of people have asked me and honestly, I know it's, it might be cliche, I guess, but like you hear, you know, from guys like Seth Rollins and other guys like where it's like John Cena, the put like as long as I can remember, I, I still remember trying to stay up. Uh, I think it was nine o'clock back then, you know, you're staying up late trying to get to Monday night, you know, 9am trying to stay up acting like you're asleep. And my dad knew I wasn't asleep, but uh, you know, he um, sitting there watching, you know, triple H rock, Austin taker, Kurt angle. Um, you know, a, lot, a couple of people I'm sure you've had on here have their different eras, but I would say I definitely caught the end more like in the uh, 99, 98, 99. Um, I would definitely say that's, that's where I started. And uh, like you said, I just couldn't get enough of it. Loved it. Um, I would say I was engulfed in it. Like, you know, I was the typical, um, let's see, my grandmother had uh, a Hulk Hogan, uh, one of those wrestle buddies that she gave me. And I'll tell you, I wrestled with that thing, tore up many couches, many beds, broke many beds, many couches, uh, just wrestling that thing for as long as I could remember. How many times but, Hulk Hogan win? So, huh? How many times oh, you going to win? I'll tell you, he didn't politic that night. Wait, wait, you can't say that. You can't say that. he didn't. <laughs> but uh, no, he yeah, he never won. For whatever <laughs> reason, I and like uh, what was it? I had like these little totes, you know, that you'll find at Walmart for like fifteen dollars or whatever. And I'd always like get the lids, and you know, those would be a table, and then you get the lids. Those are chairs and stuff like that. Cause that was probably when the hardcore stuff really started to kick in, didn't it? With the hardcore title with mankind, maybe towards 2000 ish, 2001. Yeah. So attitude era there with, uh, all that stuff going on. Um, so Hogan knowledge. was pretty much a straight up jobber in your, in your company, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
I don't and all, all I did was ever uh what was it? Uh I was I just love Triple H, man. Just I don't even and you know, everybody gives him flack for whatever reason. And I mean you can argue about it, you agree, you don't agree. That that guy to me has one of the best psych- psychology minds in the business. Like just the way he could grasp you, whether he was a good guy, bad guy, whatever it was, he would he would have you glued to that TV. And then that's when like uh earlier, you know, I was telling you guys like Sean and Triple H, that feud for me just hooked me the entire time. I didn't even realize it was maybe a two, three year feud. You know, I still remember Shawn Michaels coming out when Chris Benoit won uh Royal Rumble and it was just like, you know, he's the he's the real number one contender. Shawn Michaels, boom, super kicks him at that uh contract signing, signed his name. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Got me so like I was sitting there screaming at my TV, yeah, Shawn Michaels. But uh <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, like I said, Triple H, I remember um, when he first won the WWF championship, uh, SummerSlam, SummerSlam 99. He was, it's been told, you know, he was supposed to win it that night. You know, he didn't beat Mankind the next day. I still thought that was, you know, the greatest thing for whatever reason. I just, I don't know, love, love Triple H for every reason. I, I, I'll be honest. Um, I agree with you about Triple H and his, his psychology and the way he works the crowd and, and, and the ring. Uh, this coming from a man who is a WCW fan. Nah, gotcha. Uh, I'm a little older than you. So, you know, I went back in, you know, WCW, Florida Championship Wrestling, Georgia Championship Wrestling. Uh, I was a WCW man all, all the way until WWF bottom. But I did respect what Triple H did and does. And I appreciated him for it because he was, I mean, when they call him the cerebral assassin, that's no joke. Right. Agreed. I mean, he, he literally, and that's the thing, right? He, he was the guy who worked with the talent. Well, I mean, he, he's the one who got all the talent over. I mean, um, honestly, hated man in the business. It was triple H and rock, or I'm sorry. It was triple H and rock. Um, man, they even feuded. What was their ladder match? Was that 98 or 97? When they were for the Intercontinental Championship, when he like took mm-hmm. over DX, like Nation versus Triple H, or yeah, yeah. Nation, what was that? Ninety eight. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. When they had that enter uh, that ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship, mm-hmm. and Triple H got cheered, he got powdered in the face. Uh, or <laughs> no, I think Triple H got the powder because I remember him celebrating with the Intercontinental Title. He had powder in his face because uh, Mark Henry threw it in. That's right. Mm-hmm. Sorry total shift change but yeah go ahead <laughs> Donnie? oh yeah um so where did you start uh training at what made you go to training and, and uh, decide you wanted to do it um, i guess i always wanted to do it right like i mean we uh, probably when i was 15 16 always talked about it you know um that's when they at least knowingly you know, there was always those video games where you could create a wrestler, you could create your own wrestler, and, like, you had your buddies that watch wrestling, you, you were a tag team, or, like, you're a group, or whatever, and I don't know, I just always, like, just had, like, in the back of my mind, like, I'm gonna be a wrestler, it's like, that's what I want to do when I grow up, you know, and um, I'm trying to think, so I graduated high school, uh, worked, you know, worked, did all that, and I went to, went to college, because, oh, I wrestled in I mean, I wrestled for as long as I can remember. I think seventh grade is when I broke in. I broke into wrestling. Um, I, I wrestled. And once again, it was just like, I get like, it's not the same, you know, but um, amateur wrestled all the way out through high school and then like went to college and even was going to do it. And I just, I got to college like my first semester and it was just like, this is boring. This is what I wanted to do. And like, I, cause you know, they get you the question, especially your senior year in high school. What do you want to do? What do you want to do when you grow up? What do you, what do you want to be? What do you, and it's just like, you know, it's like things sound cool. Like, Oh, it'd be cool to be a doctor. It'd be cool to be a dentist. But like in the back of your back, back of my mind, it was just like, you want to wrestle. Like, it's just always been, it's just always been there. And it's, it's, it's always hard to explain to people. I feel like it just is like, if you have that connection, it just is. Mm-hmm. But, uh, to get to your actual question of you know so then you know i just was like i want to be a wrestler and so i you know quit you know took the rest of my college fund that i had and found a wrestling school that was local and um just began training um 
trained with uh, MCW uh, with late Kevin Shasta, who I know you know. Um, mm-hmm. you know. And that and his head trainer at the time was Ethan Wright, who was trained by Harley Race. Um, just he just recently uh, at that time, let's see, that was about 2011. He just recently uh, came back um, to Ohio from Missouri, training out there, doing stuff out there um, with his, you know, uh, Harley Races uh, group. And, um, you know, he was his head trainer at Kevin's and was showing, you know, I, I don't know. And that was the other thing. Just me and Ethan had a had a connection. Right. Like when we were in the ring, like, you know how you can just tell like and I get it. I'm I'm green. I know nothing. I can barely lock up. But it was just like, uh, I don't know. It just like even more connected me to the business with just the things he would show me or uh you know, like you said, like those old school mentalities where it's just like you, you know, you, you get in a wrist lock, the wrist lock matter. Here's why, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, Hopefully. That's a, that was your first tag team partner, wasn't it? Was Ethan. I say you guys had a pretty successful tag team there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Generation. Exactly. When we're coming up on Arnold generation iron. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that was probably 2015. So I guess I would have been two years in at that point. Yeah. About 2015 to 2016, I would say. Mm-hmm. No, kind of reunited in 2017 a little bit for Ohio Championship Wrestling. But yeah, like you said, for now, I mean, uh, I wrestled uh, Big Guns, Jeff Cannon under the Generation Iron. Uh, we wrestled, what was it? Robbie Starr, who's your now champion now. And mm-hmm. uh, Jim- Jimmy Shane. Yeah. I remember we came down there that one building i can't i have no idea what the building's called but i i do remember that mm-hmm. yep. the, at, the soccer facility at, yeah probably yeah, yeah. kick master yeah cool mm-hmm. but uh yeah i won't try to take over the interview uh go ahead. no you're fine you are the interview <laughs> that's just it you know <laughs> we're here to talk about alex matthews oh man <laughs> See, we got you on the we got you in the main event now. You're main event in this shit. <laughs> oh yeah. that's hard to believe sometimes. And I get that I've taken my time off for you know various reasons and this and that, but I can't believe and then you know COVID didn't help, but uh, you know, just to the idea that I've been wrestling for nine years total, you know, it's just it's hard to imagine that I've been in the wrestling and that's not even training. I trained for like almost two years, so it's like man can't believe i've wrestled that long already mm-hmm. you know i've got to say that um i can believe you've been wrestling for nine years by watching you work however i can't believe you've been doing it for nine years by looking at you uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a good thing I, depends what you mean by that hopefully that's good uh, you, know, <laughs> you look a little younger than i expected ah uh, uh, thank you mm. it's weird uh at my uh real job a lot of people because i'm a supervisor and stuff and uh they actually tell me all the time they're like what are you like 30 33 34 and i'm like no because <laughs> you know you know i've always had that and amongst my friends too growing up i've always had like that more dad mentality where or like the older brother where you know you catch your friends doing something stupid you're like what are you doing what are we doing this for what are you what are you doing and um like, you know, like you said, a level head or just, you know, had that, that clear mindset. And, um, but watching, but to back to your original comment, I really appreciate what you said. Cause, uh, I, I mean, I, I, when I wrestle, it's weird. Cause when I first met my wife and, you know, she's like, you're a wrestler, you know, when we were dating and stuff and I was just like, yeah. And, you know, and, um, I always tried to tell her it was just like, no, even if it was for one second, I wanted somebody in the crowd to really believe what I was doing, you know, believe in, in the character of Alex Matthews, no matter what, what that was or what part that was, it was just believe in Alex Matthews. And, and cause that's what we do. Right. I mean, we sell emotions that, you know, it's like when we, we tell a story we sell emotion and that's what got us all into it. Somebody made us feel one day, some type of emotion that wanted you to watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. I mean, got in it donnie that's how you got in jim no matter what era we're in right i mean for what i said triple h like donnie jim what are your guys favorite wrestlers and and why like you know 
I was a four horseman guy myself. I, I've always been a heel guy, and and I, I'm more I'm more lean more to toward the bigger guys like the the uh, Bam Bam Bigelows, the Bruiser Brodies, the you know those kind of guys. Mankind was a was a favorite of mine. Or Cactus Jack is when I started following him. But you know the Mad Dog Bus Sawyer. I don't even know if any, how many people out there remembers Mad Dog, but Mad Dog Bus Sawyer was big for me. So yeah, those kind of guys is who I kind of looked up to. The more physical, violent ones. Gotcha. Yeah. Me, hands down, Sting. For sure. What what era, Sting? That's an even better question. Uh, both eras. Both okay. Eras. Yeah. You know, the surfer Sting was what really drew me in. See, to go back even before Sting, um, just to date myself a little bit, I would be 57 in a few days. Well, since you complimented me, I can't believe it, Jim. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. Uh, but I would not watch pro wrestling until the age of about 12 because I thought it was boxing. And to me, boxing's boring. Right. Yeah. Uh, and my cousins who were big into it wrote me into watching it one afternoon when we were all together. I was like, oh, this is cool. Uh, and then Sting came on the scene. Now that was 77. And Sting came on my scene in about 85. It was like, I can get behind this character. And he was great, but when he became Crow Sting, right. it was even more awesome. Right. You know, so, and, you know, some people say uh, you shouldn't meet your heroes, but I got to meet Sting a few years ago. Uh, and he was just as cool as he was when I first started watching him right um I, I i was a little bit when i met him at the convention i was a little bit tongue-tied right i was marking bad i mean bad so my, bad. my my wife looked at him and said he really he really really likes you you just can't say it and as we're walking away he goes you know i started in 85 i said i remember wow and you know that that has always stuck with me that he even spoke to me beyond that and uh you know now he's 62 and still wrestling yeah right right you know so uh, of course i got a little mad at seth rollins with the whole uh buckle bomb thing at night at champions yeah well you know who I, and we don't know right i mean of course i mean i i don't indulge in that type of stuff i don't read all the all the internet and things i'm i'm naive i would say but uh i mean i don't know whose decision that was maybe i feel like if i was him and just because i'm me i even at 62 i'm like oh yeah brother go ahead give me that book bomb we go go in here <laughs> and, I'll take mm -hmm. it and i'd be like time out <laughs> well, well, Sting, Sting said he did not hold anything against seth he said you know it, it, it happened right it, right you know, so, and I appreciate him for that, but uh, that was tough because I thought Sting was done. And then, you know, I mean, granted his, his wrestling now is very limited, but right. he's still a presence. Mm. Right. Uh, and I think he's molding Darby Allen very well. Yeah, I agree. And then, uh, well, that's the thing, right? Like, I'll, let me quote a lot of people might get uh, flack for this. Let's quote Jim Cornette. <laughs> right <laughs> and as the strengths hide the weaknesses right i mean easy easy developmental stuff i mean sting is sting right he uh, alone name you know and just his, like you said his presence his his aura while he's there you know like you said it might be limited wrestling wise but he doesn't need to do all that he's sting he's already been there did that a hundred times over yes, you know yes, yeah and a little bit of trivia. Did you know that Sting the singer pays him a dollar a year to use that name? I you're lying. No way. I kid you not. Wow, that's awesome. That'd be so sweet to have that type of <laughs> yeah. Gordon, Gordon Sumner. Gordon Sumner pays Steve Borden a dollar a year to use the name Sting. Wow. That's incredible. What a name could you guys imagine what it's like to be on that type of level like that type of tier wrestler like rick you know i don't know it's just hard to find some things right How, that 
top tier performer, that top tier level wrestler, like or stay. I guess Sean, you know, greatest Mr. WrestleMania, greatest wrestler of all time, like to live up to that type of hype or to have that type. Stone Cold Steve Austin, so, you know, depending who you ask, biggest star in the business, like how to live up to such to such a hype. It's, an, mm-hmm. it's almost unfathomable. Un- I can't speak whatever you guys get the point it's hard to imagine yeah, but, but, of... but what's to stop you from being at that point myself i already know it's myself i've always said that right um i mean and it's funny that you asked that and it's funny that you, i see the picture uh behind you and the reason for that is like i remember and donnie will tell you i mean you you used to uh your more recent matches i used to be unbreakable alex matthews and i was unbreakable alex matthews for years I was even worried Michael Elgin was going to give me a cease and desist letter <laughs> for a long time. But I just, and it was just, you know, um, I remember me and Ethan wrestled at West Virginia and I had Al Snow watch. And, uh, you know, we wrestled, we did our match, probably did more than what we should have and all that, just because we're trying to just make, you know, do some new company, all that. And Al Snow watched and he came back, he said, well, you two can wrestle. You guys are two good wrestlers. He's like, well, but who are you and who are you? And, you know, and, that, and there was nothing wrong with that. There was absolutely nothing wrong. And I would say that I still didn't understand it more at the time, but it was just, he was trying. And then he broke down, you know, who is Stone Cold? And, you know, he went in there and he delivered like, who, you know, the character that Stone Cold is. And he's like, he's like, you can market that. You can sell that. And he's like, and who are you? He's like, You're just, who is Alex Matthews? And he's just like, and, and what am I going to sell with that? And that's what like made me really start to engage in my, in my brain. Like there's a difference between being a good wrestler and also being a star. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know what you guys feelings on that, but it just, like you said, like, I feel like that's where I'm at. I, I can wrestle and I know what I can do and what I can't do. I'm not going to go out there and I'm going to do a 450. I'm not going to go out there and do a backflip, but I am going to go out there and I'm going to make you somehow, some way believe for one minute that I'm either going to beat, this person or i'm going to you know i need your help to get up you know and um and that's why i was going with that sorry i start i keep mm-hmm. rambling i am on break blocks matthews to to a character that i believe is true you know at least more true to who i am of all american man alex matthews and then that's when it started to click for me like this is who you are this is what you present you know and and when you're talking to people like you're you know what you're talking about because it's you. And, you know, everybody said the greatest gimmicks are a part of you just turned up by 10, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, um, to get back to the original question of, of, you know, what says that you can't, it's just, I think it's just now starting to click like who I am as a wrestler, well, what being confident in myself and knowing what either character or what, what, like you like we were just talking about aura do i want to portray and and what do i want what does that look like to be a star and i guess i'm still kind of connecting that with the all-american man style uh gimmick see here it is it all comes down to one simple word charisma okay now i'm going to give you a prime example of charisma hulk hogan He's a mediocre wrestler at best. Right, right. But he had the charisma that made him a star. Right. So what's to stop you from having that same charisma? It's a good question. I guess I don't really have the answer for that. Um, well, like you said, though, like that's where like like guys like James Avery, rest, rest guys like James Avery is like, you're taking these pieces and these building blocks and you're trying to grasp onto them. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. And okay, we're going to do this. And, and then, you know, you put it in place with guys that are veterans that have been around and, and then you start to make, like you said, make connections. Like I still remember that picture. Ah, uh, man, that's funny. Cause I love that picture. And the only reason is I remember on that night, I had every person in that building booing me out of that building. They could not wait for me to leave. And it was just like, you're onto something like, you know, whether it be the gimmick itself or, you know, the, the name itself or just my overall wrestling ability, like you said, the charisma, um, you know, 
just the little stuff. Like you got some, like, you know, people will sit there and uh, they'll put somebody in a chokehold and, you know, they're just holding them in a chokehold. And it's just like these, you, you know, and then it's like, you expect people to react or things like that. Just, just, and then, you know, click the, uh, go into the old fashioned Chris Jericho, pick one person around the ring, right? You pick with that one person, you pick on them. Then you pick on one person over there and keep going around the ring. And then guess what? You got one person. Now somebody's mad because somebody else is mad. And then you got the whole arena. And then all of a sudden you got, you got heat, right? You got the Roddy Piper heat. <laughs> Hope I never get stabbed. I got the Roddy Piper. Heat. I want it, but I don't, never right. want to get stabbed. <laughs> you want somebody yeah. to attempt it, just not be successful. <laughs> That's right. I always think about like, I want every person in this building to hate me. I, I want them to spit on me. I want them to hate my guts. And then I think about like, man, they're going to try and fight me in the parking lot. I don't want to fight nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that you know, happen before. <laughs> yeah. Whether That's you're funny. a face or you're a heel, you want that passionate reaction from the crowd. That's right. That's right. And that's the thing, right? It's not just like have an awesome match. And, and, and it is, right? We always, you know, for ourselves, want to have good wrestling matches. But it's like I want – that's the main reason why, like, I would even say, like, because, you know, I took a break in 2017 and, and um, you know, thinking about, like, and then watching in, like, 2019, like, all these other different wrestlers, all these different guys. And like, just thinking of the story that I could have with them and, you know, thinking about, you know, the direction that you could go. And that's the thing, right? It's like, you can still have a good match or a solid match, but it's like, it doesn't need to be a barn burner. It doesn't need to be, you know, bangers as everybody calls them now. Everybody has bangers. And it's just like, not every match needs to be a banger. It needs to be solid to carry over to the next match that you hope is solid that will carry to the next match that will carry to hopefully four or five months from now that will be the banger and that will be the big payoff and the one that everyone is invested in and wants to buy tickets with because i mean that if they're not buying tickets to see you then what are you doing <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah and that's a good point for like on the on the, the wrestling uh side of things um you know each match doesn't have to be a banger as you call as they call it and then but um you know each match should build on each other you know a on, on one hand you know if you're having a feud with somebody or you're working a program with somebody each match should build upon to build up for the next match and even a, a full wrestling card you know each match from the opening match to the main event each one of those matches should also build to to push the other match forward you know that's that's after it so yeah that's a good point to make for you know the wrestlers out there that everyone doesn't have to be a five star match you know you just need one good enough just to build upon the next one right and yep. on, on top of that you don't need a spot show nope i mean if you do a spot show you pretty much ruined the story because it's all about the spots i mean oh what what big move is going to happen next don't give it all away in one shot right mm -hmm. and and that's where you know it's like um and that's what, like you said, I, I, I've learned that the hard way, right? Like, uh, like me and Ethan, right? Like there were, there were guys and I'm not, I'm not knocking on them at all. Right. I'm not trying to, it's just the idea, like you said, people will go out there and do these spots and they'll, uh, you know, expect a reaction and they don't get it. And it's just like, well, look, look what town you're in. They want interaction. They want investment. They want you to play to them. You can do that stuff. Of course, you know, you, you limit them, you know, figuring out uh, what type of crowd they are, what have you. But like you said, you play, you make them invest in the match. And then, yes, when you hit that big move, that's when they, that, that's when they'll care. You know, if you're just hitting it, it's just, they'll forget about you. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, and that was always the thing too, that I always like thought to myself is I want to be remembered after this show. You know, if Jim comes to a show, sees me for the first time, okay, that's wrestler one. Okay. This is wrestler two. This is guy in trunks three, you know, Oh, he did that one cool four fifty move. That's, but what do you remember? I remember all American man, Alex matches, just the way that, you know, I, I wanted him to win so bad. That one bad guy, uh, Donnie came in and was giving him the, you know, giving him the business, giving him the boots. And he, he reached out to me. He reached out to me. He wanted me to help, you know, just small stuff. I could go up. Mm -hmm. I could talk about second hours but just little stuff like that is just ricky morton teaching <laughs> ricky morton teaching him how to sell you know reaching out to him reach out to him uh using the ropes i remember uh, i watched in that one documentary uh what taker was saying to all the bigger guys you know using the ropes 
to help. I, you watch Taker's matches. He always did that, using the ropes to help get himself up, um, you know, when, it, when he was getting hit or things like that, when he was coming up, you know, dazed, um, just little stuff. And, that, and that's the thing. You can still hit the big stuff or, like you said, a spot show. And you just got to do it at the right time. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at that. I've did many, and many people on here that will watch this will probably say, you've had those matches and you're dang right I did, where I went out there and thought you had to do the world. But like I said, like I'm starting to get in this thing now where it's like, I feel like every match I'm coming away with, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm figuring something out. <laughs> yep, it's a growing process. It ain't going to happen overnight. Right, right. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, and everybody would. <laughs> And that, see, that's the thing I'm jealous about because, you know, in this day and age, it's easy to find a wrestling school. I would agree. Um, when I wanted to be a wrestler, not so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was one of my big regrets is, you know, when I was 15, that was my goal in life as I wanted to be a pro wrestler. You know, I had my, my dad bought me wrestling gear for christmas one year yeah amateur wrestling gear mind you i didn't specify so that's what he bought me <laughs> um so i had the singlet that looked just stupid um but i couldn't i i didn't know how to find i didn't have internet at the time i didn't know how to find a wrestling school i was in florida oh man you know so it's like okay well this dream's not gonna happen and by the time i get into wrestling i'm too freaking old to do it <laughs> you know i'm like i said i'm 57 i've been ring announcer for donnie for three years i i just wish i could take a bump so i could get a little more involved you know but you oh, know, we can get that. you to bump that's that ain't a problem <laughs> it's, it'll just you'd be getting getting your back up will probably be the problem <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that's it i can bump just getting my big ass back up <laughs> and that's the scary thing because i'm bigger than most of the talent <laughs> hey <laughs> I'm pathetic. <laughs> as, as the guys at uh at uh, the Arnold will probably tell, I try to be aesthetic. Well, there you go. For certain, I'm six foot four. <laughs> yeah, six four. I mean, that's good. You said you're six four. Is that what you said? I'm six foot four. Dang man, if only I could be six foot four. <laughs> and and I'm about three hundred and thirty pounds right now. Dang which is a bit bigger than I like to be. I used to, I'm comfortable around 250. So that just gives you an idea. You're a um, This was, <laughs> you know, I would absolutely, you know, I would love to be able to get in the ring and just do limited stuff, but I know it's not going to happen. So I live, I, I live vicariously through my ring announcing. Right. And I get that though. I mean, uh, I always think, cause you know, like, if for whatever reason I ever stopped wrestling or where that would ever, you know, cause wrestling's a ride, it's a roller coaster. You never know where you're going to go. And it just, if anything happened, it was just like, you know, training, you know, training would be fun. That would be a, a nice niche uh, that I think would be fun for me. Or like you said, being a manager, being like that, just uh, taking, you know, the personality, like you said, charisma and just, you know, maybe not taking the bumps anymore or, or wrestling, um, but still helping, you know, be get get involvement and getting, you know, whether it be he or che crowd cheering, you know, getting them invested in the match, things like that. Like that, it's still like you said, you're still playing a part, and it's an important role. Everybody has an important role. You know, we're trying to be larger than life stars, you know, and try to portray ourselves as stars. And you know, if if we have a and and no knocks on this person either, I, I never try to bash anybody, but somebody I came out and I had a it was the first time I wore my new shirt, you know, for all American man, had this new shirt, kind of new boots. You know, I felt good about myself. I came out and they called me the all American something and Alex Matthews. And I just like looked at him and I was like, all right, I'm that guy. <laughs> Not it, but you know, it's just like in, for people who haven't seen me for a while for that company and they don't know who I am. And now they're, I'm all, um, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's just mm. luckily, have alex matthews on the back of my trunk so <laughs> but you know, honestly i would um i would love to be a manager yeah absolutely would love to be a manager but i gotta learn how to take a couple of bumps because managers get attacked right right 
Uh, but I think we might be able to figure it out. If I lose a little more weight, Donnie can teach me how to take a couple of bumps. I would absolutely love to get out there and be a, a heel manager. You know, I just, oh, sure. I mean, heels are so much fun. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, that's why I said, I feel like I'm doing the best work I've ever done being a heel just because like you said, it's just fun. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's just fun. It's, it's definitely a different animal. Right. But go well, you can, you can talk to the crowd differently and you can, it's easy to draw that heat if you do it right. Um, but you know, we've got two heel managers. Now we've got, we've got Ripper Blackheart and David Barnabas Specter. Right. So, I mean, I think it's a little crowded there for, for, oh, and Mark, uh, don't forget the golden idol, Mark Caval. I mean, uh -huh. maybe I'd have to be a, a face manager, which wouldn't be quite as fun, but still cool. Right, it would be until and betray somebody, betray somebody. All right, <laughs> in the back. Uh, I want to throw a question out there because um, I always like we always like to try to pull out a golden nugget from everybody that we talk to, and uh, so with your you know the experience you've had and the, the experiences you've had are different from experiences other wrestlers have had. Uh, what would be like one key piece of advice that you could uh, offer other people that's in training or aspiring or just even listening? Oh boy, that's a lot of pressure. Um, like it, it depends where they're at, but I would argue that if if somebody is just now into wrestling, I, I even kind of do it, loop it with a story. I went to Cody Hawks when I first moved to Columbus. I, I, I went down to Cody Hawks Pro Wrestling Academy because I wanted to, you know, bump some rust off and things like that. And he was showing them how to, uh, you know, uh, tie up, grab the arm, you know, ring the arm, show them a couple reversals with that and stuff like that. And, you know, they, you know how people are when they first get in the wrestling business. They, they're not too keen on that, right? They want to body slam somebody, tombstone somebody. I would say big thing is never forget the fundamentals the fundamentals matter and like you said the and like we said the little things matter you do a back elbow you better do the best back elbow you've ever did you're going to do a forearm you better do the best forearm you've ever got and that's the thing right like you said you don't gotta throw 10 of them if you throw one good one sell it i mean that's all that matters and that i guess the little nugget and of course you'll hear that from everybody but the little stuff really matters and the fundamentals matter you watch one of alex matthews matthews Alex Matthews, getting tongue tied again. Alex Matthews matches. You're not going to see the biggest, you know, like I said, the biggest shooting star, the red arrow, like Pac or Pac, whatever he says his name is. You're not going to see that, but you're going to see me hit a power slam and, and it's going to be a, a nice tight power slam. You're going to see a spinning clothesline. It's going to be a nice tight, a little snug <laughs> close, <laughs> you know, and, and for that moment, I hope that I made somebody in that crowd or hopefully, obviously, all the crowd believe for one minute that I'm about to win this match, you know, or, you know, that's the end of the match type of deal. Good, question. Good advice. For glad sure. you brought that. I, I, I'm glad you brought up Cody because I was going to ask you about uh, how you liked working with Cody Hawk. <sighs> that man is a he actually, I'll give him all the credit. I will give him all the credit. I sat, I, I messaged him myself and I wanted to reinvent myself. Like I said, I was doing Unbreakable Alex Matthews. And I came back into wrestling, you know, after COVID and was trying. And I just felt like it, I wouldn't say it was stale, but I wanted to project something different. I and, and that's why I said those things were turning where it's like, I know I can wrestle. And I, and I don't mean I'm an egotistical, but I, I'm solid enough that if you put me as the first match on the card, I know I can wrestle. Sure. But that's not right. Like you said, charisma, that's not enough. You need if you want to be, you know, whether it be uh, semi main event, you know, main event level guy, a, a guy that, <clears throat> you know, people want to invest in. And I know I, you know, I feel confident enough now in my wrestling ability that it's like, I, I know people will hopefully buy tickets, you know, just to watch me wrestle or come and want to see this, if the story's good. But it's just like, what's something people can, you know, I've just always been generic, I would say, you know, uh, what, what's something everybody can identify, but it's like, who are you? Like, what do you want to present? What's the, 
what was the character you want to present? What's the style you want to present? And, and, you know, and I sat down and talked with, like you said, Cor uh, Ripper Blackheart, I sat down with uh, Cody and we just talked about like, you know, why did you want to join wrestling? You know, what do you do? And, you know, what, what makes you different, you know? And, and we just sat and he just started, you know, just talking about it and talking about this, like, he's like, you know, you can do this and you can do that. And he's like, you, he's like, you, you know, you work a hardworking job working overtime. And he's like, you know, factory style work. And, you know, he's talking about, he was like, you do jabs in your matches. He's like, you know, he's like, play them up a little bit. And then later in the matches, you start, you know, hitting the jabs, hitting the jabs. And he's like, he's like, they're running. And he's like, just using an example. He's like, or maybe you drop like the Dolph Ziggler elbows, you know, and you're dropping elbow. He's dropping the press on him, like putting it over in commentary, like just, and he's like, and it's not over the top, right? It's not like uh, uh, William Regal style. It's not trying to be like that, but it's just, and you add layers to it. But like you said, just picking his brain and the way he thinks and, and implements it into matches. It, it was just something I never experienced before. At least I felt like I never experienced before at that time. Just though, and you know, he used to um, own HWA, you know, develop one of the developmentals with less that, you know, it's just, that was what he did. He was a trainer and that's just what he did. So that's where his mind goes. It's just, it was just so amazing to me how just he was able to just bam, bam, bam. And he just put it together for me. He took my own repertoire, just put it together for me. And I was just so amazed at like the ability that he had to do that, you know? And so I always try every chance I get to be like Cody Hawk, man, he's that guy. And just because, and talking to him, you know, um, he's just at that level that, I feel that next level where it's like a veteran style. Um, you know, and I even went on uh, Facebook and social media because I, I personally hate social media, so I suck at it. Uh, but just try to put these posts out there and try to, you know, get some type of, of momentum. And, you know, it was just like, I want these vet guys. I want these guys who've been on the road. I want these guys who have 20 years plus experience. You know, when James Avery put out that open challenge, I wanted that experience because I want somebody to help me. I'm never going to get better wrestling guys myself. I'm never going to. And that's kind of where I fell into. Oh, well, you're a solid hand. So let's give this guy who's been wrestling for two years, three years, you know, some good matches and stuff. Like that. But that's not going to help me. I need to wrestle people better than me. I need to wrestle people who have better minds than me, like Cody Hawk, Matthew Taylor. Um, oh, man. The J like I said, James Avery. Um, you know, guys who, who've been around who, who are going to sit there and be like, nah, man, this feel like I'll never forget. Uh, we were working to this finish. Uh, me and Wilbur Whitlaw, we were working to this finish. And, and he hits the finish. He goes, they're not going to get any higher. This is it. One, two, three. And I, at first, I was mad. I was like, we had all this, you know, we had, we had this cool stuff and it would have brought him up here, but he was right. The crowd was hot right there. And we were never going to get him back to that. And it was just like learning those little things. And like Cody, you know, showing me that too, when, like you said, coming down to get back to the original question, locking up with him and him and I walk and talk and call and stuff. And, you know, uh, how to still be a heel with doing little smuggish things like stepping on people's toes, giving them a back elbow, bam. And then still hitting that nice crisp um, snap mare, just little things right before that. Like, like I said, just next level stuff to answer your question. He was just showing me that next level stuff on, like you said, you know, what makes you a top star? Those types of things are what make you top stars. Well, you know, I got to say, Cody is a master and uh, I live 10 minutes away from the FGW arena. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and my daughter was training with Cody for about a year. Okay. And her boyfriend talked her out of it. What a fool. But yeah, he was training too. Oh, wow. Okay. He got, he got disillusioned by the reality of pro wrestling. Interesting. And so he convinced her to step away from it. I was so mad because she was within probably about a month of going and doing a show on Friday night. Wow. And she just walked away. She walked away from it. Interesting. Makes That's me, sad. Drives me nuts to this day, but she's still my daughter and I still love her regardless, but <clears throat> it's like, oh, you're killing me. Right, right. <laughs> That's great. Wow. She, she bought gear from Zoe Sky. Wow. <clears throat> and all this other stuff and then she quit it's like ugh. 
man. But it is what it is. Right. You know, I can't change that. She's 25 years old. She can make her own choices. I don't agree with it, but she's an adult. Right. But Cody taught her so much, Alex. I mean, she right before she quit, she had just successfully completed her first, first moonsault. Wow. She's going to do more than me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Cody. Uh, mad props to Cody. He's he's amazing, and uh, the talent he's churned out over the years. This For second. sure. And the guys that wrestle at FGW, like you said, from the FGW arena. I remember I went there for the first night, and they made me feel at home. They made me feel family. You know, I didn't know any of them. I was nervous. I stood in the corner. Most people who who know me when I'm in the back of a wrestling. Uh, a re you know, when we're about to go wrestle, I just find myself because, you know, it's weird, right? I get on camera, I get pressure put on, or like you said, when we go out there for the show, but like, that's all I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about what we're going to, and, and it's just, it's not planning the match per se, but just thinking about, like, like I said, those little things and get it, trying to be better and trying to implement them. That, all right. So today we're going to do this. And today just thinking about it, but anyway, back to, like you said, just making me feel like home and making me feel like, uh, you know, welcoming me saying, Hey, how are you? You know, trying to involve me in things and trying to, you know, um, just, just make it more than, than just, you know, another wrestling show, you know, and punk rock kid too, cool guy, you know, definitely uh, sweetheart. And just, you know, wanted to help me out. You know, he kept, he always tells me all the time. He's like, Oh, you know, you, you've seen this a million times. I'm like, it doesn't matter if I've seen a million times. I want your, you know, I want your input and it's always great input. And it's always when we go out there and we do it, it's always great. You know, it's like, and so, uh, I mean, like, like you, like I said, every guy or every person that you, or every person, yes, guy, gal, great wrestlers. And definitely, you know, it's great that Cody offers something like that where we can go in there, cut our teeth week after week and be able to, you know, improve our craft. And for a team, audience right they just got that Dayton TV deal I'm not sure if they already had it or I, I forget the details but you know they now they're on TV and they're doing more and more production than at least I've overheard Cody and uh, some of the production in the back to talk about that they've ever done so I mean always improving always going oh yeah I I, I agree with you uh, I was um they actually called me to be a ring announcer back in December when Rick Toms couldn't be there uh, and so I came out there and everybody's very warm behind the scenes and hi, you know, nobody, nobody ignored me as everybody came up to me, just, just like the boys are supposed to, you're supposed to go around and meet everybody and everybody was coming up to me and, you know, it just, it made me feel really good. Um, being that, you know, I, I've, I've been going since before origins too. Mm -hmm. And um, all of a sudden, at the end of December, I was I was ring announcing for them, and always been in the always been in the seats. Now I'm in the ring, so they were all just great people. And you know, C Cody runs a tight ship, but he runs a warm family type ship. If that I makes agree. sense. Oh, absolutely! I completely agree. Cody's the law, and everybody knows that. You don't cross the law, right? But at the same time, he, he gives you the platform to provide your passion and love of mm -hmm. pro wrestling. Yep, definitely. Definitely. And as a matter of fact, speaking of Cody Hawk, he's going to be wrestling it at the Arnold as well. Yep, that's true. Uh, how many nights is he? he? I know I saw him and Shauna are wrestling and I think a, a multi, is it a multi-gender? Is it a mixed gender match? one of them is they're going to be yeah. wrestling on saturday and sunday uh -huh. okay yeah they then, got a mixed tag and then they're doing singles on sundays so they'll be there two days yeah well, Sean was in a in a, a triple threat match yeah um but yeah they'll both be up there and and not only that but we got uh matt taylor yeah um, we've got uh scotty amos yep harley fairfax right I'm trying to think if there's somebody else that right off the Damian Chambers. Damian, Damian Chambers, tag team champion right now in FGW. That guy's on to something. I'll put that guy over any day. That guy's on to something. I hope he gets 
Crash Jackson, is he on? He, uh, I know he's doing. He's not on the card. Okay, I know he's doing the gut check. I like Crash. He's doing the gut check? Crash Jackson. Yeah, good for him. He's, he's good. Like, um, yeah, so speaking of which, since we're going to be on here and put him on the spot, Donnie, you got guys out here wrestling two days. I told you months ago that I wanted to wrestle all three. <laughs> Right, I know. I've I've had to turn a bunch of people away for you know yeah, yeah, you can't I, even fit them on. <laughs> I know. I remember uh, Donnie he goes, "You want to wrestle the Arno?" I'm like, "What kind of question is that?" Of course, I want to wrestle the. <laughs> then uh, I know. I was like, "I'm all, I'm fr- I'll make sure I'm free all three days. I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead. I'll I'll be all available for you." And then I saw, like I said, saw that James Avery open challenge, and I was like, I was all over it. Mm-hmm. I want I want so. Super excited for that. And I think this is my first Arnold actually with you guys. I, I for mm-hmm. whatever reason, I can't remember in my head, um, let alone all the other stuff that I've already mentioned for the last, how long now? Um, I don't, I don't know why I haven't, I don't know whatever happened or what came up or what have you, but, uh, it's, it's super mm-hmm. exciting and super nerve wracking. Cause like, um, I mean, I've, I've loved bodybuilding too. And, and of course, mm-hmm. you know, people, and just like the the atmosphere, I mean, I subscribe to guys like Chris Bumstead. I watched Nick Walker, um, Ryan Terry, Arnold Classic champion before Men's Physique. Um, you know, um, just guys like that, and you know, knowing that they'll be there, and and you know, mm-hmm. Arnold, Arnold in general, just the spectacle they will be, and you know, wrestling in front of that type of crowd, it's just. It's, you know, it's like nerves, but it's good nerves, right? Like, you know, like I said, you starting to get confidence in yourself and, and you're like hope to deliver and want to deliver. And then like you were talking about the impact gut check and, and things like that. And it's like, it's more eyes and you start to get a little more nervous, but at the same time, it's just, is this is what we do, right? That we wrestle because we love to wrestle. It doesn't matter who's there or what it's just, I want to go out there, have a good match with James and, you know, hopefully somebody will talk about me later in a good way right like, hopefully go. it'll be like man Alex, James you, Avery, that was good you know uh-huh. you, so, never know, you never know who's gonna be there i mean i'm expecting some wwe and aew talent to be there as well just because it's the arnold i mean that's fair that's fair yeah uh and you never know what promo what promotions are gonna have scouts out there to see what's going on at new ohio wrestling right uh-huh. right yeah, there's rumors that people are going to be in the crowd watching the shows, so you never know. Like I said, our our goal is to open doors for people, so hopefully, you know, something good comes out of it. I'm hoping. Yeah. That'd be really – I mean, and that's the other thing. Like, I was talking about unfathomable, like, just, like, thinking that type of deal would happen to me. And I, and I don't know, you know, why I think like that sometimes, but it's just – I don't know. We watch, like I said, we watch these guys for however long and we, and we think of them in a certain way and to think that that could be us, you know, and I, and I know tons of guys who, who that's happened to, they've gotten signed, they got their contracts and they're doing their thing, you know, and, and that's great for them, but it's just hard to imagine for me. I don't know. The dr- the boyhood dream has come true for Alex. <laughs> just hard to imagine. I don't- you, you never know. I mean, there might be a, a, a door open for you after this. And and I'll give all the credit to Donnie Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, Donnie takes payments. I'm yeah. sure he does. <laughs> I'll just go. I'll just take out of boys. That's enough for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what are you guys, uh, just because I feel like this will be a, a – what are you – because I know you guys got a lot of guys on the card that might also not be familiar with this area or – or they're more associated with different areas. What type of guys are you guys excited to see that are like uh, the, oh, what is this guy's name? Victor Benjamin. Is that true? Is he, he's mm-hmm. there, right? Victor. Yeah. Benjamin. He'll be there all three days. He's coming up for the weekend. And uh, yeah, he's yeah. been on, he's been on our shows before. So I'm real familiar with him and lady frost. They've both been on our shows and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to see him. Uh, actually, to be honest, one guy uh, that I've always wanted to watch just out of curiosity and he's actually another one of the James Avery's accepted James Avery challenge is Jamie Holly. And I've always been interested in him and, and I wanted to see what kind of, cause he reminds me of a, a big stocky Rick Steiner type of wrestler. And, and so I'm just curious to see what he can do. And uh, yeah, cause he's one, I've never seen any of his work in person and stuff, which there's quite a few that I haven't, but uh, yeah, Jamie Holly kind of has my interest for, for a little bit. What about you, Jim? 
Uh, you know, there's so much talent coming in. Um, I, I'm familiar with Victor Benjamin, but uh, the one that's got me most curious is uh, his now Magic Jake Dumas. Or mm -hmm. Dumas. Uh, he used to be Fable Jake in the NWA, and they changed his gimmick. And, uh, you know, we talked to him uh, last week and I'm really interested, interested to see what he can do because he seems like he's the type of talent that could really draw the attention of a crowd. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's the one I'm looking, I mean, there's a lot of talent that I've seen and I know how they work. Um, but, uh, he's one of the ones I want to see. I, I, I want to see how he works and everything. So. Yeah, it would be uh, him and and Beast Man are my two um, two ones I want to see work uh, this weekend. For sure, I just did a tag match with Beast Man. Well, not with him, against him, but that was pretty good. It was pretty different. Like you said, you know, used to wrestling guys your size. Well, everybody's for the most part bigger than me, but now a really big man. You know, uh, getting to do it as a heel and get to be like that cowardly, you know, classic old school, just big man versus little man thing. That was cool. Especially with the gimmick. Very cool. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, Donnie, um, mm -hmm. even though we haven't talked a whole lot about horror, we've got to get a little bit of horror in there. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It wouldn't be a wrestle so, horror without it. <laughs> so, yeah. well, well, I think you need to pop the question on Alex. All right. Well, first off, are you are you a big horror fan or do you have a, an old school icon that, you're, that you favor? Or, or what? how are you about horror films? Uh, well, I would say I used to, I, you know, when you get married, you have kids, you know, you can't necessarily always watch movies anymore. Right. So mm -hmm. I'd say, I, um, I wouldn't say, you know, um, horror films exactly. It depends on your, your definition of horror. I, I like the more suspense and thriller movies kind of goes with my wrestling style. Like I was telling you, telling a story, but just, mm -hmm. you know, get the bumps and, um, trying to think what was, what would be one. I really liked The Conjuring when it came out. I really liked The Conjuring. I thought that was really good. Um, uh, you're smiling a little bit. What do you think? What do you think? Go ahead. Uh, there's a reason I'm smiling, and I will explain it to you. <laughs> Donnie's like, oh, shit, here we go again. <laughs> okay, you enjoyed The Conjuring? Yeah. Okay. How much do you believe of that story? Well, let. all right. If you watch the movie, I don't believe the end. <laughs> but okay, I mean, it depends. I mean, I would say I would arguably believe in some paranormal. You know what I mean? Here and there. So I mean, there there's some stuff that I would believe somewhat happened. I don't know about the whole thing. You know, that's why it's called based on a true story. It's not all true. Correct. <laughs> now the reason that I laugh here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm a paranormal investigator really okay okay and on september 9th of this year donnie and terry myself and my wife shauna reed and a friend of mine are going to investigate the actual conjuring house in rhode island holy crap mm -hmm. that's it yes. i hope i hope the best for you i hope the best for you <laughs> Yeah, I've never done them before, so it's definitely going to be interesting. I figure go big or go home. <laughs> and that's that was my thought process because I bought a whole bunch of new equipment. My latest piece of equipment that just came in is a thermal imaging camera. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's super sweet. Yeah. That'll be super Not Dude. cheap. No, I bet. Don't doubt it. Um, but I've been playing with it all weekend. <laughs> I was, I was, I was watching it. My, I let my dog out in the backyard, and I could tell where she took a dump. <laughs> you know, it's like, gosh. Uh, what, what's uh, just because you're talking about it, and like we're on the uh, the theme of horror. What was like the craziest thing that you've ever experienced since you said you're a par paranormal investigator? What was the craziest thing you've ever experienced? That's a good question. Um, there's two things that come to mind. Um, and both of them actually happened. There's a, there's a, a decommissioned prison in West Virginia called in Moundsville. Uh, and it's the former West Virginia state penitentiary. Okay. 
Uh, and one of the things that happened is I was sitting in the cafeteria, um, pitch darkness with my ex-wife who was investigating with me at the time and mm -hmm. grabbed my pant leg and pulled. Oh man. Uh, now I had a night vision scope and I looked around, I couldn't find anything. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to amend that to three things and I'll tell you the second one, then the third one. The second thing in that same prison was uh, I was doing an EVP session and my ex-wife was like, oh, look, there's orbs on the camera. I'm not a big fan of orbs because there's too many ways that they can be, right? you know, debunked. Right. Um, but I, I went back through the audio and I've got an ethereal voice on the recording saying, what, what did you get? Wow. And the third thing is the Waverly Hills um, Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. And my current wife and I were there. And on the fourth floor, what they do, uh, if you just take the two hour tour, uh, there are absolutely no lights on this floor whatsoever. And they'll take people and they'll send them down a hallway. And the reason for this is because there are shadow people that occupy the fourth floor and people say, Oh yeah, it's, it's BS. But I watched my wife walk down the hallway and completely disappear from sight. <laughs> um, and then she reappeared when she started walking back and it wasn't because of distance. It was because something was blocking. Wow. So those are three things that really stand out to me in paranormal investigation. And I'm what I, I'm what you call a hopeful skeptic. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing, but I want to believe. And I, I'm looking for that proof. I get that. I get that. And with the conjuring house, I'm hoping to get a whole lot of proof. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you, super. Just, you just check my underwear after we're done. You'll probably get all the proof you need. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was the place you were at where the uh, uh, the ghost was didn't like you or was didn't want to provide any activity because you were around or something? Yeah, that was at um, there's a a bar in uh, Walton, can not Walton, but uh, Wilder, Kentucky, which is just across the river from Cincinnati. Uh, it's called Bobby Mackey's. Okay. And I went there with some uh, Ghost Hunters International people back in the mid 2000s, late 2000s. And they have an, a device called an, an ovulus. And what it does is it takes electronic phenomena and translates it into voice. Mm -hmm. So we were all sitting, there's about 20 of us sitting in a group and the guy that was leading the group said, okay, everybody asked the question, are you not talking because I'm here? Because we were getting nothing but static, nothing coming across. And I'm about in the middle of the group and everybody's going through and they, and I get to my, they get to me and I say, are you not talking because I'm here? And it says, yes, clearly. Wow. So they so they asked me to get up and leave the room. Now I was still with an earshot because it's a bar and the walls aren't full, but I was in a separate section of the bar. Now, as I'm standing in the separate section of this bar, they're starting to talk to it again and it's chattering up a storm. But to my left, I can hear bar stools moving where nobody is. Hmm. What? that was just one of those things i didn't have the equipment i have now right i wonder I, why i did or what i didn't like about you that's a good question and maybe it's because i was a skeptic right right I would not talk until after i left the room then it was chattering up a storm right you ever uh i i wouldn't say not to get, uh, you know, like, because I could talk about this stuff. This stuff's always interests me. But um, just like things that are uh, 
you can clearly, I wouldn't say clearly tell, because those are certain special people that can tell those types of de- deals, but like clearly something is not good here. You know, like this is, this is not something we should play with or, you know, it's like, we got to go style. You know, you go somewhere and you go, we got to go. <laughs> uh-uh. Well, and, and mm. that, that's one of the things that concerns me about the conjuring house. Um, my wife and I, we, we've been doing this for over 20 years and uh, we know how to protect people uh, from bad spirits right um and i say bad spirits um bordering on demonic right um and we're gonna go over the t you know because none of these people have really done anything like this i mean chris and i are are the experts on this and so there's going to be protections in place to make sure they don't bring anything nasty home right for sure and silver is a beautiful deterrent just so you know interesting hmm. i didn't know that i wear i wear a silver necklace with a silver charm all the time hmm. um but silver will help protect uh i against bad forces um but it's got to be constant if you're going to be in that location you just can't not have some kind of silver on you and it right. and can't just be a little bitty piece it's got to be you know at least a little bit of a substantial amount of silver to to deter that hmm, that's interesting what about you donnie we've we've me and jim been going back and forth what what's your uh what's your favorite horror or what what and what recent movie would you say that came out because you said you were an 80s guy earlier what what's some recent that you really liked when it came out uh to be honest i actually like the new texas chainsaw that came out because i didn't i didn't go into the new texas chainsaw master looking for a story i I went in looking for what it was was uh, you know a gory slasher because i'm a i'm a slasher fan and uh you know the story was kind of in some ways it was kind of corny but some ways i got it and didn't it didn't uh add up like the story didn't line up with the others but the gore was phenomenal i mean yeah the it, for what it was it was amazing gotcha it was a gore fest oh yeah yep, <laughs> absolutely it was i mean especially especially the bus scene <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah 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 like i said well, you I've, know, I've seen a lot of people bashing it and stuff you know like oh it sucked this and that and that's because they were going in looking for a story and i'm like that's not what texas chainsaw massacre is like it's a it's a you know it's a slasher you know well you know just because to show like i said how far back i watched them you guys might not remember them right offhand the one thing that like i always got i wouldn't say turned off with but like it was like i got turned off but then turned back on was with the saw films and 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 the reason for that is like i like the saw films you know they were good like it was a nice good story first one you know dude walks you know all that and uh had good principle and things like that that you could follow and then it started to get a little carried away and like uh, it's like it was hard to follow kind of there for a minute from what i can remember where i was just like this is just like you said gore gore is that that's all it was yeah or, you know yeah they the call stories. it tor- torture porn is what they call it <laughs> you know where it's getting kind of like the story's getting lost but then you caught back up and they ca- caught the story back towards the end half where you started to get into the what was it like the sixes seven or final chapter whichever however many it was and it all came back around and and things like that and then so i don't know i wanted your guys principle like i said just because you we've barely talked about horror i just wonder what you guys thought about those yeah yeah i'd like to said you know i'm okay with a, a slasher film that doesn't have a a solid consistent story and uh, because you know i go in expecting it is what it is just like i'm i'm a huge jason fan i'm a friday the 13th guy and they're they're probably the prime example of stories that didn't stay on track <laughs> i mean you know was, he just went they just got to a certain point and like all right we're going to turn left and we're going to put him here and then we're going to put him here and, you know, then they brought it back around and they made a new remake and tried to explain how he was always in certain spots. And, you know, so, but, you know, Jason's just my guy, you know, he's a slasher and he's, you know, him and Michael Myers are probably, you know, or not probably, they are the two greatest slashers ever created. So, you know, and, and uh, 
Yeah, that's just it is what it is. You know, like I said, people like you said you like thrillers, and I did. We just saw me and my wife just saw a good thriller the other night called No Exit. It was on Hulu, and it was a it was like a drama thriller, and it was actually really good. And uh, but yeah, but yeah, like for, like I said, I'm a slasher guy, and you know, I like uh, the found footage films too. I, I've I've realized a few years back that I've I'm pretty uh, I'm a pretty big fan of found footage films. So so those kind of are in, down my alley as well. Yeah, those are cool. Okay. What's that? Movie? I can't remember what it's called offhand for whatever reason. I'm gonna probably catch heat because I I know a lot of people love it. Uh, what was the one where like the what was it the blind man and they try to rob his house and then it turns out that he actually tries to get them. What movie mm. was that? And they came out with a second one. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I cannot remember mm -hmm. the title. Yeah. It. Hush was a different movie, so that's not it. Yeah, Hush, Hush was Hush was pretty good. Yeah, I mean Hush was good. I remember Hush. Um, I that know was what, where, what you're talking about. Yeah, but that movie, like you, when we were talking about drama thriller, yeah, it was like, it kind of, was Don't Breathe. Don't Breathe. There it is. That mm -hmm. movie. That one was really good. Like I even liked. Um, um I even found because I saw it in theaters. Um, I even liked how when they shot the gun, they shot the gun and, and the color, cause it was like black or it was dark or, you know, tried to portray that it was dark, like the camera work. And then it was like, when they shot the gun, it was like color for like a moment. And then went back to black. Like, I just thought like, that was just cool. It was different. Like you don't see stuff like that, where it was just like, it was almost like they, it was trying to be realistic and like trying to be first person. Like what would happen if like you did, the, you know, you encountered stuff like that. It was cool you know mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure you know um going back to saw i've got all the saw movies love them um i'm I, i'm a fan of, of of the the gore you know it's like i want something to just horrify me i want something to just make me cringe and you know it, we could go on and on for hours about this because I'm a haunted, I'm a professional haunted house actor. Right. And so I'm very difficult. It's very difficult to scare me. I get that. Do you but, have all the hostile, hostile films too? Yes, I do. That's torture. Oh. Porn. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> More so than Saw is. That's definitely torture porn. Mm -hmm. I definitely remember time I saw that movie. That's exactly what I thought. I, I walked away and I was like, what did I just watch? <laughs> but, watch a Serbian you know, film. <laughs> oh my. I've, heard, I've actually heard of a lot of my friends have tried to say that they said you should watch that i said i am never going to watch that movie <laughs> remember i that watch, I was, watch <laughs> terrifier mm -hmm. terrifier is a good one okay we actually had the killer on our show oh really um i was last year i think mm -hmm. <clears throat> plays art the clown and he's just nasty. He's a evil. He doesn't say a word. Watch it and you'll understand. I, I can't, I don't want to give anything away. All right. All right. But uh, it's, it's definitely, I became a fan of that. And then of course there's girls with balls. Right. <laughs> Which is currently on Netflix. Oh God. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> Are you guys fans of bad horror films? Like so, you laugh. I am to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. I was a fan of Girls with Balls because everybody watching it with us was hating it. So I, it made it made it fun for me because I knew I was torturing them. <laughs> but it's ba <laughs> it's basically a girls volleyball team meets Hills Have Eyes. It's pretty much right. what it is. <laughs> Holy. And it was, it was Donnie and Terry and me and Chris, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we and had Terry, our daughter for a while and then she gave up and went upstairs. <laughs> right. And Terry and Chris are like, are you serious? And me and you were like, hey, girls with balls. Yeah. Give it a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. But, Mark that. but fun. <laughs> yeah. You but. see new ball young girls with volleyballs and mutants that are 
um, what doing, trying to do whatever, you know, it's like, Oh my. <laughs> so Donnie, I think you need to drop the question on Alex. All right. Yep. We're going to put you on the spot here. There, there is no right or wrong answer. It's all for fun. Uh, we just like to get inside the minds of our guests and see if they're just as twisted and, and weird as we are. So that question is, you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What is your go-to kill? What is my, oh man. You know, I would actually say, and, and I'm not going to have an exact one because I can't remember, but I would say, uh, oh man, I just lost it. What I think it's called The Collector. You guys remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Yes. That is who I would like to be. If I was going to have one, that is what I would do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, precise, pres like little, like. Uh, have you a nice still, collection? <laughs> yeah. But uh, the, the, what was it? The piano scene where he uses the piano wire and he sets it up like, you know, obviously she runs through the hallway 50 times and all of a sudden somebody, you know, puts it out there like that, that type of idea. I don't know. Just like the little, uh, uh, yeah, the collector. I, I would say I would try to resemble that. Okay, if nice. I Piano wire is always a good kill. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, that's just the most memorable that I remember from that movie. But I remember just because we're talking about it, like you said, I love the the collector was a really good movie when it came. Out. I loved that movie. I couldn't. Rem I remember when part two came out, and I was so excited to see that movie just because of how good the collector was. I do remember that. No, very cool, very awesome. Uh, so, Alex, tell people how they can find out, even though you don't like social media that much. Yeah. I mean, they can find me on Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Alex Matthews, Facebook. Um, they, I do have a Twitter, even though I, I started it because I, I, uh, you know, like I said, you gotta be involved in social media these days, but I never use it, but, uh, I don't have the, the, uh, little thing right now, but I I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Um, nothing crazy like Instagram and TikTok or Twit whatever these people do these days, <laughs> you Technically, I have a YouTube channel, but it's like just to post matches and promos, and that's really it. So, I mean, I guess you could find it on there. I have tons of, I wouldn't say tons, but I have okay matches on um, on YouTube that they can, if they just search Alex Matthews Wrestling, they can find it or an Alex Matthews match from probably 2014 to, you know, 2016 to probably recent. I would say even probably recent. Okay. I would bucks on youtube but <laughs> right anything film um i mean donnie what what did you fight tv right you said uh i have mm -hmm. a couple of that jeff cannon uh match that i referenced i thought that was really good for yeah. somebody for how many years i had in the business and um i really enjoyed that match going in against jeff uh jeff cannon the tag match is on there from now I'm trying mm -hmm. to think what other we've did with with now um yeah i think yeah. it was just those two yeah but yeah they're both on fight uh so i mean those are just a couple things jim that people can try to find me i, I wouldn't say i'm hard to find i guess being x amount of years in the business now but now, do you post uh your upcoming shows on any of your social media oh for sure i always try to share um like right now i i would say i'm pretty frequent with uh i just got into war uh, me and Ryan Michaels with Nick Han, the Hauntourage, uh, War Wrestling in Lima, um, OCW, love OCW too. Um, that's more uh, Akron. Um, and then there's Power Slam Pro Wrestling. Um, they, they're, they're like that picture behind you. It's just every once in a while I come in, you know, do, do a, a match for here and there. Um, those are uh, primarily, I think, going more in Maslin now. <clears throat> they were doing Navarre and Maslin. Um, trying to think. Oh man, I was doing Pennsylvania for a little bit with all uh, all or nothing wrestling. Uh, without looking at my calendar, that's just to name a few. I mean, I'm always open for anything, but that. Oh yeah, I always try to share um, as much as I can. You know, promos. Uh, um, 
you know, so the poster, things like that, try to talk about the match, you know, on social media, things like that. Okay. So make sure you check out Alex Matthews on his social media, find out where he's going to be next. By the time you hear this, he'll already been at the Arnold, but we're going to pretend like it's before then. <laughs> uh, and he will definitely be at the Arnold wrestling, the stretcher, James Avery. Um, check out where he's going to be next. You never know where he's going to pop up in the, in the tri-state area uh, for, for Donnie Hoover and myself, meet hook Jim and our special guest, Alex Matthews. This is the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Thank you for joining, and we will see you on the next episode. See you guys. <laughs>